Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel. It has been so long since I filmed a video and in case you guys didn't know, I am nine months pregnant, hence why I haven't filmed a video pretty much all year. I think the last time I uploaded a video was in the spring and the next day I found out I was pregnant. <laughs> so it's been a while since I filmed. I've been trying to kind of keep up with everyone on social media and all that fun stuff, but it has been a very exhausting pregnancy um, and with working full time, I just haven't had time to be here, but I am finally on maternity leave. Um, getting ready for my little boy to come into this world and I'm so excited to share that with you um, as well me and my husband have been just kind of like getting his room together and all of that but in the meantime I actually have been reading because it's just been really soothing to me to read um, while I'm not feeling well and things like that the first couple of months my brain was just like all over the place like it was just like dealing with the shock of being pregnant I think that I was just like oh my goodness like couldn't focus on anything um, besides like baby stuff but, oh, excuse me, I'm getting out of breath. <laughs> That's another thing when they're like crushing your lungs and everything. Um, but yeah, so I figured I would do a little bit of Vlogmas because I haven't filmed in so long. And now that I'm getting a little bit of energy and getting excited for the baby to come, maybe I can incorporate a little bit of that into my videos. So I want to start off a little bit of Vlogmas with a book haul. So I accumulated some books. This year, I've been also trying to read off of my like physical TBR while I've been pregnant instead of buying more books because I had to save some money. But I do have over 30 books here that I'd like to share with you that I did purchase this year. So this is a 2023 book haul for you guys since I haven't done one in so long. Uh, and my reading taste has changed a little bit. I am in my like fan row era. Uh, completely um, after reading the entire Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Mass I've just been like obsessed and I keep wanting to go back to that series also so I may end up rereading it more towards the end of the year if I have time once the baby comes um, people tell me that babies sleep a lot so I may have some time extra time to read but also I'm probably gonna want to sleep in that time so I think audiobooks are gonna be great for me and also um, reading on my kindle might be better than physical books it's going to be kind of hard to hold a physical book while holding a baby <laughs> um or like you know baby carrying baby wearing but yeah i'm so excited i just wanted to share that with you guys in this in this intro uh in case i go into labor before i can even finish vlogmas but let's see it's a little bit of a challenge for me uh but yeah so let's just get into the book haul I want to start off with uh, two new releases basically. So we have Fourth Wing, this is the holiday edition, and then I have Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros. This is the second book in the series. I just finished Fourth Wing um, a couple weeks ago. We actually had COVID in this house. So um, I just laid around and read Fourth Wing because I did DNF it previously and because I was just not feeling it at all. Um, but I think I enjoyed it a little bit more the second time around, but I'm just not feeling the hype on this, like, like everyone else. And I, and I attempted to read Iron Flame when it first came out, because it was kind of like that same week, and I'm still feeling like, ah, this is gonna slump me. So I put it down for a little bit, so we'll see what happens. But I do love books about dragons, I think it's so unique of a, like, different spin on things because we've been just so like washed through with like the fairy content and and witches and things like that so having like a dragon type dystopian story um that's like romance it's just it's fun it's definitely fun and i get it and i get why people are hyping about it because it's something new it's like a new theme but i'm just still feeling a little slumpy i don't know what it is with it it's just not clicking and everyone's saying how much they love it they love it and there's not much romance in it like there the romance scenes are good uh, but that's not what i'm there for with like fantasy romance like not the seamy scenes you know what i mean i like the banter i like the 
you know, the love friends to lover, enemies to lovers, whatever the case is, but when it comes up to the steamy scenes, I kind of like skim through them a little bit. I don't know why, <laughs> but I just do. Uh, but there's not much of that in Fourth Wing, and I don't know if there's more in Iron Flame, but I'm just feeling slumpy reading it. But let me know your opinions on the series. Just don't leave spoilers because I just don't want anyone to be spoiled for the series. But it's a huge hype. I, I was in Barnes & Noble last night and they actually have gift cards with fourth wing, like a fourth wing gift card that you can get people. So it's just like, it's the next new thing. So trying to get into it, we'll see what happens. The next I have some of my like book of the month books that I uh, got this year. Um... I've been kind of skipping. I haven't been loving the selections and I've been like just not loving all these big hardbacks that I've been getting. Like I'm not reading my book of the month books unfortunately so I'm trying to limit the ones that I do get. Um, I got here The Unmaking of June Farrow and this is by Adrienne Young. I loved Spells for Forgetting. I read that last year so I picked this up. I heard this is like I don't want to spoil what I heard it's like. I heard it on someone's channel that did spoil it. But it is another, like, magical realism type story. And I heard it's great. I love Adrienne Young's writing. I think she's a phenomenal author. Um, and then I have here Divine Rivals by Reve Rebecca Ross, which I attempted to read. And I actually loved it. But I was also reading Fourth Wing at the same time. And I just needed to put one of them down um to concentrate that's another thing like it's hard for me to read multiple books at once right now so this has been kind of on the back burner but i will be picking it up again and then i got alice hoffman's the invisible hour if you've been on my channel for quite some time you will know that i love alice hoffman as a person as an author practical magic is one of my favorite books ever and i just needed to have this and book of the month had it as a selection so it was definitely definitely better for my budget <laughs> doing it that way and this cover is just so beautiful it makes me want to go here for vacation like it's just so 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 beautiful sorry for the lighting being see if we can adjust it a little bit ah oh, there we go let's open a window oh, I have great lighting in this room but it's just because the windows over here my shelves are behind me it kind of like filters it a little too much sometimes depending on the time of the day but this is the best I could do sorry guys so the invisible hour I tried to read this um, but I just, I wasn't ready to read it yet. So I think I may wait until like the spring or summer to pick this up. But it is kind of a fall read. Um, and then I got Vampires of Elm North by Isabel Cañas. I recently read The Hacienda and I loved it. Like not expecting to love that book as much as I did really. I read it by the pool this summer and I read it in two days. It was just such a great book. So I picked this up in hopes of loving it as well. I just love the way that this author writes gothic, creepy, historical fiction without it being so um, like flushed out. I don't know how to explain like, like it's just such a beautiful way of writing that she has uh and it just goes so quick it really does and i like the multiple point of views that she always does as well and the multiple timelines so looking forward to getting to this beauty and this cover is really pretty too so next i have another new release that i was in the middle of but i put it down because I was reading Fourth Wing again, uh, is The Scarlet Veil by Shelby Mahurin, which I really love Serpent and Dove. I didn't get to finish the other two books because I was just like, it was a little bit of like a different vibe, the second book when I started it. So I kind of put it down for a little bit and then I picked up this series and I'm really enjoying it, but it does spoil things for the series. So I think when I'm done reading this, which I'm about like halfway through, I'm gonna go back and read Blood and Honey and uh, Gods and Monsters, even though I'm like kind of spoiled for the ending of it, but I just kind of need to go back and see what happened. But I'm enjoying this. It's a vampire romance fantasy. It's actually pretty good. Uh, I've seen mixed reviews, but I'm really enjoying this. This is right up my alley. Some more new releases here. Um, I have Curious Tides, and this is by Pascal Lachelle. 
Uh, I heard this is like a dark academia book and it has to do with like the moon phases so I thought that was really cool and it has to do with like a university on the moon or something. I, I don't really know but it just sounds so beautiful so this is definitely high for my TBR. Probably going to start it right after you know I finish the other books that I'm in the middle of but this is definitely high up on my TBR that I'm going to get to hopefully before the end of the year and hopefully before the baby comes in like three weeks. <laughs> and then I have here Bonesmith by the Nikki Palpretto. Uh, this I heard is similar to like Gideon the Ninth vibes. There is ghosts in here um, and our main character is like an assassin similar to Selena Sardothian from Throne of Glass. So I picked it up because everyone's been talking about it. I love the cover. I think it's so cool. And I really did enjoy Gideon the Ninth uh, when I read it. So uh, if it has the same vibes as that, but more of like a YA premise, I'll probably fly right through it. All these books have stickers on them because I'm afraid of ruining the covers. I really am just over the sticker thing. So Barnes & Noble, lay off the stickers. Um, and then I have Throne of the Fall in here by Carrie Matascalco. Carrie Matascalco is one of my favorite authors in the YA genre. Her books are just so easy to read. Um, and this is her first like new adult type book and it also connects to the kingdom of the cursed world um it has to do with one of the bro i think one of like the brothers in that series are like the seven deadly sins like they're demons of hell or like the different so i don't really know like it's just so this has to do with envy i believe so we'll see this is a ro fan fantasy romance having to do with that same world which I kind of enjoyed. I mean, the last two books were okay, but um, I'm looking forward to getting into seeing her adult writing now that she's coming out with these books. And then I have one mystery thriller, and that is Midnight is the Darkest Hour. Um, I heard that this is like a cult-type spooky mystery thriller book um, by Ashley Winstead. I haven't read anything from Ashley Winstead. I do own... Um, one of her books. What is it? In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. I do own it. Uh, I have not read it yet. It was on my TBR for the fall, but I just didn't get to it. So I am looking forward to getting to this. I love the cover of this also. Like the covers this year are really like pleasing to the eye. Like the, the book sales must be really high this year. Um, but yeah, I heard this is like a cultish type thriller. Um, and then I have here Masters of Death by Olivier Blake. Me and Olivier Blake's like writing don't really, I don't really love her writing. So I'm curious to see how I'm going to like this. But this is like a spooky vampire um, ghost story that has to do with like a real, like a, a vampire who's a real owner, I think, or like a medium who's a real, I don't really know, but it's just like weird. It's just weird. So I'm looking forward to getting to this, seeing if I'm going to like it. Um, anything that has ghosts, mediums, and vampires in it, I'm like so in. But I just don't know when I'm going to get to it. I tried to read it this fall, but it was just not my cup of tea at the moment. So looking forward to getting to this, though. We'll see what happens. The next I have some more. Um, like buy one, get one 50% offs from... Barnes & Noble. I have Witches at the End of the World, and this is by Chelsea Iverson. I don't really know what, what this is about. I think this takes place in, like, it's, like, in Norway in, like, very early times with, like, the witch trials and burnings of witches. Um, and you could tell by, like, the cover. It has runes on it. I just thought it was right up my alley because, as you guys know, I love witchcraft. I collect books on witchcraft. Um, I have studied witchcraft for a really long time, practiced witchcraft for a really long time. So I thought that this would be a really great book um, for me to read. So I picked this up recently. Then I have here The Hexologist, and this is by Josiah Bancroft. And this I heard is like a mystery, like, um, about like these people who have cursed objects, like almost similar to like ghost hunters and ghost adventures and but it takes place like in the early like 20th century i believe um so it sounds it sounds good that's all i really know about it but i heard good things 
And then I have Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed. I heard this is great. This is like a witchy type story about, um, someone compared it to like the Cinderella story, like with the sisters and things like that. Um, so I'm curious to see if I'm going to like this. It is on a fairly like shorter side. I do like Ava Reed's writing and she does write a lot like a story is geared towards witchcraft and witch mythology and things like that so I do enjoy that so we'll see if I like it I'm looking forward to picking it up at some point whenever I don't know when I'm having a baby so <laughs> uh, next I have here Foxglove and this is by Adeline Grace uh, this is the second in like well I think it was supposed to be a duology but now it's going to be a trilogy um, and this is the second installment uh, to Belladonna um, I heard not so great things about this, so I'm not really in a rush to pick it up. Uh, I did enjoy the first one. I didn't love it, but I just love the covers. Like, these are the most beautiful books I've ever seen in my life. Like, kind of reminds me of Beauty and the Beast a little bit. Um, but, my gosh, this is like the most beautiful and pages it's just such a stunning book so if you can get your hands on the barnes and noble exclusive editions like the first editions get yourself a copy even if you don't like the book it's just so so pretty not for nothing the author is really pretty like look at her she's beautiful so everything about this book makes me want to read it but everyone who's been talking about it recently been making me think I'm not gonna like it so we'll see we'll see what happens I will keep you updated on this um, let you know my thoughts then I have House of Roots and Ruin by Erin A. Craig which I absolutely loved um, <laughs> House of Salt and Sorrows by the same author this is an extension on that book uh, it, they say it's the second book but you don't need to read the first book to read the second book um, it's, it just follows one of the sisters from Salt and Sorrow um, so this is like a gothic retelling of the 12 dancing princesses and if you know that story you know what happens um, so that's not much of a spoiler but um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to getting into this. This is such a beautiful cover as well. I mean, like I said, they're doing such a beautiful job on book covers this year. And there's not I'm a little disappointed on that. Like for an exclusive edition to just be plain. Like there needs to be like some type of embellishing or something here. But the end pages are really beautiful. So yeah, looking forward to getting to that because I do love RNA Craig's writing um super spooky gothic has to do with poisonous plants totally right up my alley then i have here ink blood sister scribe and this is by emma tours i started this i i got to about like 50 pages and i'm not sure if this book is for me i'm quite bored by the character so far um so I don't really know if I'm going to continue picking this up or not, but I've heard great things about this book, and it's the Good Morning America Book Club book. Like, it's kind of everywhere. It's up for the Goodreads Awards. So I wanted to see what everybody was talking about, but honestly, I'm not loving it so far. So we'll see. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below if you've read this at all. Um, and if it does get better, maybe the beginning's just a little slow, but for me, I need, like fast pace right now or my brain just goes whoop, right out the window <laughs> next i have a study in drowning by ava reed another ava reed this is her ya um dark academia book has to do with fairies has to do with the mystery I'm looking forward to getting to this i thought i was going to read it a lot sooner than i did i thought i was going to read it when it first came out but i did not get a chance to do that so i'm looking forward to picking it up at some point. I will read it though because I do love Ava Reed's writing. This is a book I bought yesterday and it is The Book of Gothel by Mary McMine. This is a retelling of the witch who cursed Rapunzel. I have heard nothing but magnificent things about this book and it has my favorite deckled pages but look how beautiful that cover is too. It's like so beautiful. Um, this takes place in 1156. And it's about a witch. 
So I'm looking forward to getting to this. This sounds like a nice book that I could just kind of lose myself in for quite some time. Next, I picked up The Unfortunate Side Effects of Heartbreak and Magic by Brianne Randall. I started reading this and it was, it was okay. It says for fans of Practical Magic and Gilmore Girls, which are my two favorite things, which is, I think a lot of us ladies here on BookTube are, those are our favorite things. But I wasn't getting those vibes at all when I first started reading it. So I kind of put it down. Um, I, w I wanted it to be a little bit darker than what it was. And at the time I was kind of missing my grandma. So I didn't want to read anything about a grandmother that was sick. Um, so I just put it down for a little bit. But I will get back into it. But I need like a quick and easy read. Sorry if my location on the screen is different. Um, my camera died. I had to change the battery. Um, so next up, I have The Prison Healer by Lynette Noni. Now, no, that came out so weird. <laughs> Noni? <laughs> um, this is the first in like a pretty big series now. I never realized how many books are in this series until recently. Um, I have bought this book twice and I hauled it twice and this is my third time purchasing it. It keeps popping back up on booktube so i just want to know what everyone's talking about and everyone loves this series it is on the quite you know shorter side um book wise i'm just not sure if i'm gonna purchase like the rest of the books in the series but um at least i have the first one and if i like it then maybe i'll check them out from the library or read them on my kindle or something because i'm kind of running out of room on my shelves for series but i heard it's great and i don't know why i kept on hauling it i guess i just never thought i'd get to it but now i'm gonna get to it i'm gonna read it i bought it for a third time third time's a charm i'm going to read it and then i have here four books that are like connected to each other so i have caraval which i absolutely loved i just finished this recently and i loved it so i can't wait to pick up legendary and finale um i just really loved it i didn't think i was gonna love it as much as i did i didn't think it was gonna be as dark as it was either for ya i mean it was pretty dark at some times and i really just <laughs> enjoyed caraval if you haven't read caraval by this point um it's about this girl who she i would say she kind of lives in like this fantasy world in her brain but she for many many years wanted to go visit caraval which is a island that has this like caraval like and, and it's games and things like that and all the guests that get invited to this island participate in the games um but the games are pretty dark and they make you think and some people go insane on the island doing this like it's it's crazy and the magic and it's just so great it's so great um and it's basically like be careful what you wish for that's kind of the message that you get and that's what everyone is kind of battling for is these wishes that you get from the owner of this Carval game um I don't know if I'm explaining it right, but that's that's what I got from it. And it's really just such a fun time. So I'm going to probably start Legendary very soon and finish up the series. And then obviously get into Once Upon a Broken Heart, which I started reading because everyone loves it. But I wanted to get more knowledge about the Caraval world first before I jumped into this spinoff series of the Caraval series. There are like similar characters in here and things like that. So I just wanted to read it properly so I wasn't spoiled for anything. And then I have this like fantasy romance type book and um, this is called The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy. And this is about like an undertaker I think, right? Um, and a ghost or something? I don't really know. But I've heard really good things about it and I picked it up the other day. I just really love the cover as well. But I feel like it's just, it's in the romance section. But it is published by Orbit. So it definitely has some family, fantasy aspects to it. And then I have here at the Coffee Shop of Curiosities. And this is like a magical, realism, cozy type story. Um, just about life. So I thought that was 
um, a cute pick. I don't know, I was kind of feeling like in the cozy mood when I picked this book up. And I loved the butterfly on the cover with the coffee mug, so could have been a cover by for all I know. But I, I think I'm going to read it. I'm pretty sure I'm going to read it at some point in the next year, at least. And then I have some big babies over here. I have Brandon Sanderson's Oathbringer. I plan on reading The Way of Kings while I'm relaxing, recovering from childbirth. So I have, I'm actually in the middle of The Way of Kings now. I've been, that's been my like go to bed book. So I purchased this. I love these like chunky little bricks of a book. I don't like the bigger paperbacks of Brandon Sanderson's books. I love the small little mass paperback ones for some reason. They're just more fun to read, easier to hold. Um, and then I have here The Mask of Mirrors by M.A. Carrick. I've heard really good things about this more recently than when it first came out. I remember when it first came out and it was on a lot of people's anticipated books to read list and I, I did add it to my list like a couple years ago but it just never got to purchasing it and then it started resurfacing again on booktube so I just picked it up and um, I think there's three books out now in this series but I, I know that there's a lot of characters in here a lot of world building in here a lot to absorb in here but I'm just I'm in the mood for it and I picked it up and then I have this fun one bookshops and bone dust I loved legends and lattes when I read it and I'm just looking forward to getting back to these characters well the main character um, and this is a prequel to that book so I'm curious to see how you know the author brought everything full circle with that and then I picked up this paperback of the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I do not own Hunger Games anymore. When my parents had a flood in their basement, my books got destroyed. Uh, so I put that on my Christmas list. But uh, because I've read those already and I do have them on my Kindle, I just picked up a physical copy of this in lieu of the movie release. I was hoping to read it before the movie release, but that did not happen. But I'm hoping to read it before I see the movie at some point. And then I picked up this chunk because I was reading it on Kindle Unlimited and I actually really liked the cover more so than like what was happening in the story. But this is called Between by L.L. Starling. And look at the witches dancing on the cover. It's just so cool. But this is a um, fantasy romance. Very large book. But it's like based on like witchcraft and time traveling and traveling to other worlds and things like that. So all things that I love in this book and um, I'll get to it, finish it eventually, hopefully. But I was enjoying what I was reading. It was just, it's a lot. It's a big book. Next I have God Killer by Hannah Kaner. I've been wanting to read this for the fall, but obviously I didn't get to it yet. But I'm going to pick it up sometime soon. It's a fairly, fairly short book. It's a first in a new series. I think the second book is coming out soon or in 2024. I'm not exactly sure. But yes, looking forward to getting into this. I heard it's great and everyone who's read it has loved it so i'm looking forward to getting into it and look how pretty that cover is as well it's very fall like and i love the moon and the deer it's just so beautiful and then i have these two babies the barnes and noble exclusive editions of crescent city house of earth and blood um i am in almost done I'm almost done guys with this book. It is taking me like a whole year to read this book and multiple editions to get through it. But I'm getting through it and finally things are happening. I was getting really bored. Really, really bored. I don't know why everyone says that they love this book and I was just like, when are things going to start happening besides the smut? Um, but yeah, things are happening now. So enjoying it, getting through it. And uh, can't wait for the third one. I have here A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. I love this paperback. I loved this book. This was excellent. I read that in October. Loved every minute of it. I ate it up quickly. This is a very quick book. If you're looking for a book about vampires, Dracula, his wives, things like that, and just like the gothic history of vampires, 
I would check this out. Um, it was so much fun. And then in tandem, I've been reading Anne Rice's vampire series. I finished the Vampire Lestat, so this is the next book that I gotta get into in order to continue the series. There's a lot in this series, and I will probably be reading it until the day that I die, uh, but I am looking forward to getting into this because I really love Anne Rice's writing. Her books are phenomenal. And getting in the heads of these vampires and learning the lore and how deep she takes it, it's just, it's amazing. It really is amazing. The movie is not so great, but the books are phenomenal. I just wish I picked up more Anne Rice sooner. I really, I really do. I feel like I've been missing out my entire life. <laughs> then I have here B.E. Schwab's new book, new series, The Fragile Threads of Power. This has to do with the Darker Shade of Magic series, which I read and loved. I'm not sure when I'm going to pick this up. Um, I've heard mixed things, and it's just kind of low on my TBR right now, but I did love the cover. Um, so when I started Barnes & Noble, I had gift cards. I was like, I guess I'll just pick it up. I never walk past the V.E. Schwab book. I always purchase her books, no matter what. And then I have, this is what I'm currently reading, is Powerless by Lauren Roberts. I am really enjoying this a lot more than I thought. This is very Hunger Games-like, but it also has fantasy, romance, dystopian. Um, I'm loving, like, the magical powers in here. Just, just there's some things missing, like the trials and, like, why they're happening and things like that. Um, there's some things that I'm just, like... I just need some more info but other than that I'm really loving it so this might end up being like one of my favorites of the year and then lastly I think lastly right I think I got everything um, I have Emily Wilde's encyclopedia for fairies and now I know you're saying if you've watched my previous videos that you have this book in hardback already I do but I love this paperback so much better than the hardback that I have. This is so pretty. Like this is one of the prettiest covers I've ever seen. And it has the deckled edges. And of course I have a little mushroom bookmark on the inside. I decided to reread some parts of this because I did read it and didn't love it the first time around. And I don't know why because I feel like it's just a book that I should love. So I've been kind of rereading it here and there on certain days and I am enjoying it and I liked, you know, that it was November so I was kind of reading it according to the day that it was November. But now it's, as I get this video up, it's December 1st. Um, so I have a little catchy up to do with that. But anyway, that is it. That is all I have for you guys today for this book haul. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these books, if you loved any of these books, if you too just picked up some old books that were like booktube famous from like 10 years ago, um, like Caravelle and um, you know, that. Though I love how that series is kind of resurfacing because when I first got into booktube, I would say like, oh my god, how many years ago is this now, like six, seven years ago, um, it was just coming out then like there was just all this re like resurgence of the YA genre and it's happening again and I'm just I'm loving it that is all I have for you guys today for this book haul starting on vlogmas uh, hopefully I can get some videos up for you before this baby comes um, it, my due date is December 16th they have me scheduled for an induction on the 18th but he can come from now till then at any time. Uh, but I will try to keep you guys as updated as possible. And I'm going to try to vlog as much as possible the next couple weeks now that I am on maternity leave. Just kind of like day in the life stuff. Um, and yeah, that's it. So it's so nice to be back. It's been a while since I filmed a video. And if you have any book recommendations for me, because I'm going to be spending a lot of time home please leave them in the comments down below and if you made it to the end of this video leave a blue heart emoji um in lieu of my baby boy on his way so that is it for now and i'll be talking to you guys soon bye